This is a recap for Thursday, October 28th. In class today, we went to the resources for week seven. We went to the third uh, resource here, which is week seven Pear Deck, Multiply and Divide Decimals. So if you're watching this and you missed class and you're trying to make up, um, then go ahead and log in here and follow along with me. And then I'll go back to the first slide. So copy this down in your notes. Um, you can just do the left side, the multiplication of decimals. And then click on this link right here uh, and take notes. You can also get this into your notes. So right at this point, um, go ahead and uh, stop this video and take notes from multiplying decimals and math anywhere and then uh, you come back and return. Okay, so I'm going to figure that you came back, you took your notes, and now I'm going to explain it in a little bit different way. And This is what we did in class. Um, so I'm going to multiply a couple of decimals together. So if I do 2.6 times 3.2, uh, if I follow the directions in the video, it says just ignore those decimals. So just do 26 times 32. So I'm going to do that. It's 12. 6 times 3 is 18. 19. That zero placeholder because this is really a 20, not a 2. 2 times 4 is... 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. Add those together. And then we get 832. And then the, de the video instructions say that you count up the number of digits to the right of the decimal point in what you're multiplying, and you have to have that many in your answer as well. So that is a good explanation, but it doesn't really say why that works. So I'm going to do another example and show you why it works and what mathematically is going on. So let's say we have 1.2, and we're going to multiply that times 5.7. When we ignore the decimal point, it's not really, we can't really make things disappear in math, but we can sure multiply by tens. So that's multiplied by 10, and this is multiplied by 10. So I multiply both those by 10. 5.7 times 10 is 57. So it seems like the decimal disappears. It doesn't really disappear. We don't ignore it. We'll just move it over where we're used to it. And 1.2 times 10 is 12. So then we do 2 times 7 is 14. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Placeholder, 1 times 7, 1 times 5, add them up. And now what we have to do is we have to adjust this because it's 100 times too big because we multiplied it by 10 twice. So now we need to divide by 100. So we're going to take the decimal point that currently is right here, and we're going to divide it by 100. There's by 10, there's by 100. So that gives us the correct number of digits, and it also explains why we're doing it, why it mathematically uh, works. Okay, let's do one more example. And we don't have to put in the multiply by 10. We can just um, know that that's why it's working. So let's do a little bit bigger number, maybe 3.7, and we'll multiply it times uh, 2.86. Notice how we don't really worry about lining up the decimal points like we do in addition because we're going to ignore them, or we're going to multiply them away. So I would multiply this times 10, this times 100. So at the end, we're going to have to divide it by 1,000. So 7 times 6 is 42. Carry that 4. 7 times 8 is 56, plus 4 is 60, carry that 6, 6 times 2 is 12, plus 4 is, tw or 14 plus 6 is 20, okay, we've got a placeholder here, 3 times 6 is 18, 3 times 8 is 24, so that's 25, carry that 2, two 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. So we're going to add these up and get 10,582, and then we're going to divide it by 1,000, 
because we have one, two, three tens to deal with. We multiply it by 10 twice here and once here. That's a total of multiplying it by 1,000. So we're going to take the decimal point that's right there, and we're going to divide it by 1,000. 1, that's 10, 100, 1,000. So the answer is 10.582. Another thing that uh, you may have written down in the video is just to think, just to estimate. This is almost 3, this is almost 4. So we could say, well, that's around 12. Well, that's pretty close to 10.5. It's nowhere near 105 or 1. So we can even figure out where the decimal point goes through just estimating. Let's estimate these up here. This is kind of like 3 times 3, and we get clo pretty close to 9. This one's kind of like 1 times 6, and we get pretty close to 6. So you can estimate um, to get uh, your answer is pretty close. So uh, just an announcement if you're watching this and you're working on um, IXL E3, which is what you should be working on next, that we changed the SMART score to 60 because some of them got pretty long. Um, things like uh, 6.75 uh, times 321.5. Five. So it just would take a long time. It's easy to make one mistake. So that's in the upper um, scores, uh, like in 80s and 90s, or 70s and 80s for smart score. So uh, smart score of 60 is full credit on E3. All right, and that is a recap for Thursday, October 28th.